Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my research into using a Raspberry Pi Pico as low capacity data storage for my 6502 computer. Last time we dipped our toe into the programmable input output water and found it wasn't too bad. We output an 8 bit parallel byte without too much trouble. The next step is to control the data transfer between the Pico and the 6502. So why don't you join me as we try out a few more of the Pico PIO features that will let us add flow control to our parallel data interface. The more common term for flow control is handshaking. However, due to COVID, people are rapidly forgetting about real handshaking. Anyway, handshaking is how two or more devices keep track of which one is doing what. In our high-speed paper tape emulation, this was done with the data ready and data taken signals. The device providing the data, in this case the Pico, tells the 6502 that the next byte of data is ready for use by setting the data ready signal high. The 6502 reads the byte from the Pico and after it has the data, it sets the data taken line high, telling the Pico to send the next byte. Because of speed differences between the Pico running MicroPython and the 6502 running machine language, I had to add a little hardware logic to make everything work. However, since using the Pico PIO is much faster than MicroPython alone, maybe we can get rid of the hardware. As a review, each of the two Raspberry Pi Pico programmable input-output blocks has enough memory space for 32 instructions. There are a total of nine different instructions which include jump, wait, in, out, push, pull, move, interrupt request, and set. While limited in number, they are very powerful. What makes them even more powerful is that each instruction can be modified by two options, the side set option and the delay option. Side set is a feature that allows state machines to change the level or direction of up to five pins concurrently with the main execution of the instruction. For instance, if we were to output an 8-bit byte using the out instruction, we can simultaneously output a data ready signal on a side set pin or pins. The delay option specifies the number of cycles to delay after the instruction completes. The delay value is specified as a value that's between 0 and up to 31. This is needed for timing critical applications such as serial communications. The side set and delay options can both be used in a single instruction, but there are some limitations on the number of pins or delay cycles that can be specified. Let's get right into trying these options. My goal is to output a data ready signal each time a byte is available at the GPIO pins. In this exercise, I've wired GPIO pins 0 through 7 to these 8 red LEDs which represent the data. I've also wired a green LED to GPIO pin 16 to act as the data ready signal. I'll use the out instruction to output the data just like I did in the last video. I'll use the side set option to control the data ready pulse. In order to use side set, we have to declare it in the ASM underscore PIO decorator. Here I've added the side set init configuration statement. This reserves a GPIO pin as an output that is initially low. Next, in the PIO program, I've added the dot side one option to the out command. This will output a 1 to the side set pin at the very same time that the data is output. Then I've added a no op instruction where I turn the side set pin back off. When I instantiate the PIO program, I map the side set pin to the GPIO pin 16. Also note that I'm running at a very low frequency in an attempt to catch the change of state of the data ready signal on camera. The rest of the program is where I increment the output from 0 to 500, just like I did in the previous video. Let's try it out. As you can see, the green data ready LED is pulsing. However, even at this slow speed, 
it's hard to see if it's in sync with the data output. I'm recording at 30 frames per second, and data ready is pulsing a little faster than that, so I'm missing some of the pulses on camera. However, looking at the signals on the oscilloscope, we can verify that the data ready is going high at the very same time the output data is available on the GPIO pins. I'll cover more about the delay and frequency features of the PIO in a future video. Next, I want to try some handshaking. However, since I don't want to use the 6502 computer to debug the program, I'm going to do something a little wild. I'm going to have the two separate PIO blocks handshake with each other. I figured this would be a fun way to try out the dual PIO blocks as well as learn about inputs and the weight instruction. In general, I'm going to use PIO block 0 to present the data and set the data ready line high. PIO block 1 will simulate the 6502 and when it senses the data ready line high, it will set the data taken line high. Then when PIO block 0 senses the data taken line high, it will reset the data ready line low and grab another byte to output. When PIO block 1 senses the data ready line low, it will reset the data taken line. Note that PIO block 1 is completely autonomous with no interaction at all with the main processor. Now let's get into the demonstration. I've connected the data ready output from PIO block 0, which is GPIO pin 16, to the data ready input of PIO block 1, which is GPIO pin 18. I've also connected the data taken output from PIO block 1, which is GPIO pin 19, to the data taken input for PIO block 0, which is GPIO pin 17. The data ready signal is visually displayed by the green LED, and the data taken signal is displayed by the yellow LED. I've added a weight instruction to the master PIO program, Paral underscore prog. The weight instruction will stall the program while it waits for a particular condition to occur. The first value in the parenthesis specifies the polarity. In this case, one means high. The second value indicates what to wait for. This time, it's one of the input pins specified by the index. The last number indicates which pin to wait for. In this case, it's the base pin. So this wait instruction will wait until the data taken line, GPIO pin 17, is high before it starts the program again, resetting the data ready line low and grabbing another byte to output. The program that runs in PIO block 1 simply waits for the data ready line from PIO block 0 to go high and then sets the data taken line high. When it senses data ready low, PIO block 1 sets the data taken line low. I set up GPIO pin 17 and 18 as inputs. Then I instantiate PIO block 0 with GPIO pin 17 as the data taken input and GPIO pin 16 as its data ready output. Similarly, I instantiate PIO block 1 with GPIO pin 18 as its data ready input and GPIO pin 19 as its data taken output. Let's run the program. I'll start out very slowly with one tenth of a second delay per byte. We can see that both the data ready and data taken lines are flashing, and the data taken is in sync with data ready. Now let's speed it up. I'll remove the sleep instruction and set the frequency to 10,000. We can see the most significant bits flashing, and by using the oscilloscope, we can verify that the data ready and data taken signals are acting as expected. Finally, I'll set the frequency to 10 million. Everything is a blur, and this speed is pushing the limits of my scope, but you can still see the data ready and data taken lines are in sync. The 20 microsecond time between the pulses is the length of time MicroPython is taking to get the next byte. I'm ready to hook this up to my 6502, but this video is getting a little long, so I think I'll end it here. Thanks for joining me today. 
We successfully implemented data flow control signals using the side set and weight features of the RP2040 PIO. We also got both of the PIO blocks to talk to each other as we simulated data handshaking. Next time, I'll try transferring data between the Pico and the 6502 using the PIO features of the RP2040. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.